Welcome to Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz, a candid conversation as we learn about dementia, Alzheimer's, and its effects on the people we love. Jill's years of dedication and experience help you adapt, recover, overcome obstacles, and help find a positive outcome. It's time for Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Hey, glad to be here with everybody today. You know, I have a support group once a month, and sometimes they give me good fodder to talk about on (laughs) the radio. So uh, not that I want to share everything that my support group talks about, but some things come to my attention. And so this week, one of the things that really sort of hit me was uh, the support group had a lot of concerns about the care of their loved ones. And it was anything from people walking into the rooms in the care community to um, clothes being lost, to uh, somebody um, having an injury that maybe they weren't sure the staff was aware of, just little things. And it made me think, gosh, with 700 communities here in the Denver metropolitan area, I don't know if many of you know what the proper routes are to take if you've got questions, if you have concerns, or if you have real issues with that particular community that maybe your loved one is staying in. You know, it can go the whole gamut. Maybe you really like the staff, but there's an issue or something like that. So right away, wherever your loved one is staying, if they're in a community, I'm talking to people that are in a community that have a loved one in the community right now. Up near the front desk or the um, uh, receiving desk, you know, the place where you stop in and, and sign in before you go into the unit, there should be a sign with the ombudsman's office phone number. The ombudsman's office is part of the state of Colorado Department of Public Health or any Department. It could be any state, uh, I'm, you know, because I have a lot of listeners uh, nationwide. So it could be whatever your state is, okay, uh, that Department of Public Health. There will be a name of the specific ombudsman that is assigned to that community, okay? And you should be able to see a phone number and even an email address. Now, the ombudsman's office role is to come in and assist with any issues that are happening while the person is there, Truth of the matter is, once that person has left that community, there's not much the ombudsman's office can do. But if you call them and you just need some assistance, maybe your loved one has a sore or something because they haven't been rolled over often enough every two hours or something like that and they're bedridden or um, some another resident hits your loved one or something like that, or maybe you're just not getting along well with the people at the community and you need some assistance, they're there as mediators to help you. So that's number one. Look around the office area. It should be posted in a place that you can see readily, easily on the eye. So look for it, the ombudsman's office, who that person is assigned to that person, that community, or assisted living, and then uh, you can write that number down. Now, don't be afraid to call them and think, oh, my gosh, the community is going to hate me or something like that. Uh, I would like to see you talk to the community first um, and try to resolve these issues. But if you feel like you're not getting there or they're not giving you the time, you've emailed, you've called, you've taken several several routes to have some resolution on whatever your issue is, um, then you can contact the ombudsman's office and they'd be happy to play a mediator, okay? But... This is what I suggested to my folks at my support group. They should ask for a care plan meeting at least once a quarter, or you can tweak it to get it how you want it. You could do it three times a year, every four months. I would not recommend having your care plan meeting twice a year. I don't think that's enough. And when you go to this care plan meeting for your loved one, what questions are you going to ask? Well, get your pad and pen out because I've got these for you today. Um, I want you to uh, think about writing down the issues that you have. Don't forget to put in the kudos for the staff, too, okay? If you like particular people working with your loved one, mention that, too. It will take some of the edge off. If you don't like anybody, that's a whole different story, and you might need that ombudsman there to help you. (laughs) Just saying. Okay, so what would you talk about? Here we go. You would talk about the overall opinion of your loved one's condition. How are they? How is the progression of their disease? 
Are they moving along steadily? Has there been any changes? What are you looking at in terms of their care? Um, are they? Uh, the next thing you would talk about is what medications are they on? What is their efficacy? Meaning, are they effective for the symptoms they're trying to target? Uh, that's very, very important. And also ask the question, how are those medications being measured? What are they attempting to make better? Is there a behavior or reaction? Was the loved one hitting someone? Are they anxious? Um, are they having hallucinations? What is that medication trying to target? How long will they be on it? If it doesn't work, how much time will they take to wean them off of it? All of these things are very, very important. And as part of your resident rights, you have the right to see those reports. The The medication report is called a MAR, M-A-R, Medication Account Record. And you can see that every time you have a care plan meeting, if you choose. You can actually see it anytime you want, but it takes a while to print it, so be thoughtful towards the community that you're working with and just ask them if you can see it. They will print it for you if you request it, but you have to fill out some forms and you may have to pay for it. And then you would need a guide on how to read it. The next thing, um, are there gradual dose reductions on those medications? Some states require that, um, so that's something you should know. Um, Are there any medications that should be eliminated? Maybe... uh, Namenda or Aricept or Exelon, if somebody's actually in a memory unit and they're in late stages, are those medications any longer effective? Maybe, maybe not. If they have Lewy body, the Aricept could help. But um, if they are not, those drugs have a limited efficacy. That's not just my word. There are studies on this. So uh, most of them, Namenda and Exelon, do not work in the late stages, just so you know. But ask your doctor, and if a neurologist put your loved one on those medications, ask the neurologist when you want to take them off, okay? Um, Also, again, what symptoms are they trying to treat? All right, the next thing you should ask about is nutrition. What are they eating? Are they liking the food that they're eating? Are they having any reactions? Are they having diarrhea? Are they throwing up? Are they getting highs because they're eating something they weren't supposed to be eating? If you've given a list on intake of the things that your loved one liked or disliked, make sure that they're following them. This is the time in the care plan meeting when you can work on these things. Um, Also, are they still able to use utensils? Can they cut their food uh, by themselves? Do they need assistance cutting their food? Do they need assistance getting the fork or spoon to their mouth? Should they be on um, foods that are now finger foods that they can actually just pick up and eat because they're no longer able to use um, utensils. So these are important things. Um, Also, if they're losing weight rapidly, that's something you would need to know. That might be showing us that the person is further progressing in this disease and maybe changing stages or maybe entering uh, a hospice zone. There are drinks that you can use uh, that like ensure that will help uh, put some calories on, but there's a lot of questions that should go around what um, what level of cognition your person is at and are they moving into the late stages? Now we need to start talking about do not resuscitate uh, feeding tubes, which I'm not a fan of. Most people are not because they can cause a lot of issues. Things like that. All right. The show today is dedicated on how to talk to your community and even how to talk to your doctor when you have a loved one that has some type of dementia. It could be Parkinson's, Lewy body, Alzheimer's, um, frontal temporal, whatever it is. You need a plan and that's why I'm here. I'm going to help you. So make sure you have your pad and pen and write down these ideas. We'll be right back after a word from my sponsor. Hey friends, I'm excited to tell you about Pine Grove Crossing Assisted Living and Memory Care in Parker, Colorado. They set the bar high for person-centered care. They're locally owned and they focus on exceeding their residents' expectations while providing excellent dining, housekeeping, and transportation services. Their care team with licensed nurses are available 16 hours per day, 7 days a week to ensure clinical needs are addressed as soon as possible. Check them out at pinegrovecrossing.com or 303-996-8000 and see how care goes into everything they do. 
It's time for Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Okay. Our talk today is about how do we talk to the care community, assisted living, whatever it is, even our doctors, about our loved ones when they have some type of dementia. And you know I specialize in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, frontal temporal, Lewy body, and others with memory loss and cognitive impairment. So I was talking about how you sit down and talk to the people at your community. This actually could go over other lines. This could go to your home care companies that you're working with. How do you talk to your neurologist if you have your loved one at home? It doesn't necessarily have to be about the community. But these are just questions that you could ask and ways that you could stay informed and updated on your loved one's care. So back to it. When we went to break, we were talking about nutrition. And has there been any changes? Uh, Check your loved one's weight. Their eating habits. Are they able to use utensils? Um, if not, can you cue them to eat or do you have to use um, liquids? Do you put soups in a cup? Uh, things like that. All these are changes that happen with the progression of the disease. The next thing you'd want to look at is what are their sleep patterns? Are they up at night? Um, walking around, is this just something they always did or is it because they don't have enough stimulation throughout the day? This is something you need to think about. If your loved one just has an activity at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. and another one at 4 p.m., that's probably not good enough. You need to keep them active throughout the day. You can work puzzles. You can look at magazines. You can knit blankets. You can play cards. You can go for walks. You can bowl in your hallways with those plastic bowling pins and things like that. But make sure your loved one has enough activities and engagement throughout the day so that they sleep well at night. Um, If they're are not, those are things you would want to know about. If they're in a community, ask, are they going down at 7 or 8 p.m., uh, 9 p.m.? Are they up all night? Does that matter? Uh, but you don't want to get people off schedule. If it's off your schedule and you're the caregiver, that could be a real problem. So, you know, think about those types of things. Now, the next thing, reactions to care. A lot of people like to call them behaviors. I don't. I think a lot of things that happen in communities with people with this disease, uh, especially Alzheimer's or any type of cognitive impairment that has progressed to the point where they're in a memory unit, they're generally reacting to something someone did. I had a great example. Yesterday, I was at a, a community and they were having an end of the year party. And one of the people told me that um, the resident at a place that they used to have their loved one, uh, the person was about to fall and a caregiver just walked by. And they mentioned, hey, that lady looks like she's about to fall. The caregiver rushed back to her and the woman kind of struck out at her and tried to hit her. And she said, she doesn't want my help. She's just, she was just trying to get my attention and turned around and walked away. And sure enough, the lady fell. That, to me, is a reaction. Never rush up on a person with Alzheimer's. They're going to freak out and hit you. So little things like that. What were the behaviors that they've listed in your loved one's document? And this is, like I said, again, for home care or even a care community, if you're in a a care plan meeting. What occurred and how did they handle it? What redirection skills did they use? Did they try anything that would take that person's mind off of it and take them to another place in their mind? Did they try discussing uh, what that person did for a living? Did they try talking about their wife or their husband or their grandkids? How did they approach that person? What created the reaction um, and how did they handle it? Did they handle it with redirection skills or did they ask you to use medication? These are important important issues. So please ask about it. Again, what has the activity level been for your loved one? Are they participating? Find out, did they come to the actual activity or did they do the actual activity? And if they did, how long did they participate in it? It's not really a matter of that person sitting down for a half an hour to draw a picture. It's more if they'll just engage in it. But did they like it at all? Or did they just walk in, turn around and walk out 30 seconds later? 
try to find the things that make that person happy and continue to have them feel like they are important, they are valuable, and maintain their dignity and their quality of life. Activities are super, super, super important. Um, All right. Now the big one, especially at a community. How can they prepare you for what changes might occur in the future? Are we moving towards hospice care? Are we in palliative care where we're trying to actually help that person with day-to-day living and and working on any uh, issues that come up like the flu or a cold or something like that? Or have we moved to comfort care where now we're just going to supply pain medication to make that person comfortable? Uh, we're no longer going to try to treat what their illness is or their disease is. And we're just moving towards uh, the end of life and sort of letting that person go. How can they prepare you for those things? Can they talk to you about what hospice looks like? What does that mean? Hospice really comes in just to be extra support for a care community and they also for home care. Um, they're not there to necessarily take over care. They're just going to supplement that care and make sure that person feels comfortable and that they're not in any pain, uh, administer any medications that they might need, um, things like that. But they don't come in and just take over. They can also play mediator if you're having any issues with the community or the home care company you're working with. Um, and they can supply support and um, counseling for families which is something I don't think people understand. That's a big deal. So, you know, you need to ask about those moving forward problems, issues, um, and look at them as opportunities to set that care to the level and the procedure that you want. As an example, my mom did not want to be resuscitated. So if she had any heart problems, uh, anything like that, uh, which she did have some heart issues, but uh, if uh, if she had any problems, we were not going to resuscitate her if she had any aspiration or choking on food or things like that. I mean, it's not like we wouldn't pat her on the back and try and get it out or help her get it down. But if she was actually in an actively dying situation, we weren't necessarily going to stop it because she'd been in this disease for 23 years. So those types of things. And again, I mentioned feeding tubes. Talk to professionals about that. Generally, they can cause infections. uh, They prolong life. um, And maybe we need to stop and think about how long do we want to prolong this disease, um, especially if it's Alzheimer's. I mean, once they get to a point where they don't know anybody, they have a shuffled gait, there's... uh, walking around sort of with a blank stare, how long do we want to keep that going? You know, so you have to make those decisions before you get to that stage, because I'm telling you, it's painful when you do get to that stage. Okay, so those are huge, huge things that you need to talk about in um, communities. Again, we call them care plan meetings. You should have them once every four months, maybe three times a year. Um, so you can stay on top of things. If you're working with a home care company or you're just working with your doctor, these are things that really can help. Okay. So uh, last but not least, ask about um the cleanliness of the rooms, the laundry, and remember to say what you liked about the staff and what you some concerns you might have seen with the way the staff um, works with the residents. Those kinds of things are important. And schedule your next care plan meeting for three months in the future, okay? Always have that date and time set. We will be right back with more information. Living and working with Alzheimer's and other dementias can often be challenging. Summit Resilience Training provides education, utilizing non-medical approaches for those who work with our friends affected by dementia. Believing families still need one-on-one assistance, we provide classes which help them understand the diseases affecting their loved ones, offering strategies and techniques for success with activities of daily living and working with confusing behaviors. We offer in-home assessments, education programs, instilling person-centered care philosophies are offered for professionals caregivers working in communities and homes, which can be customized for their staff. Training is also available for first responders. We are passionate that people with dementias such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and others are approached with compassion and understanding, and those who work with them have all the tools they need for success. 
Call us at Summit Resilience Training, 303-420-6988 to schedule a class or in-home assessment. Visit our website at summitresiliencetraining.com for more information. It's time for Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. All right. So I hope that has been helpful information to you about how to um, get ready and prepare for a care plan meeting. I believe you should have these once every four months, probably three times a year with the care community your loved one is in, with the home care company that you're lo- that is coming in to help you with supplemental care and things like that. Now, the last thing I didn't tell you about those care plan meetings is that I want you not only to schedule them in the future, get a date and a time set before you leave the next time. Don't let it fall. Uh, the meeting should be probably no less than 30 minutes and prepare your notes so everything you need to address is covered. You don't want to leave anything, okay? Um, when we had care plan meetings with our mom, my mom's uh, uh, care staff that was working with her at her memory unit, the um, executive director would come, the head nurse would come. If there was any physical therapy, the PT person would come. And oftentimes the chef would attend talking about my mom's nutritional needs and what she was eating and what she wasn't eating and things like that. So you can invite a lot of people to be there. Take the initiative, people. Don't just assume your loved one is being cared for in the best possible way. We hope for that. We always hope for that. But don't leave it to chance. And on the other side of this, don't just uh, necessarily add up all the little things. Mom's wearing the wrong shirt today or somebody walked into her room. Those kinds of things happen in communities. But don't let those little things that are making you angry build up into a great big mountain. And then you go in there and you're complaining. Talk to the staff. I I would say send an email to um, the people that are the administrators of the care for your loved one, no matter who it is, care community or home care, and ask them to uh, answer your questions. Give them time to write a response to the email or schedule a time where you can come in later in the week and ask for 15 or 20 minutes, be specific about how much time you need and see if they can help you with those issues, okay? Um, But don't let those things build up. And if you have these care plan meetings every quarter, chances of you enjoying the care and enjoying the people at the community um, will increase in unbelievably. So you're really increasing your odds for good care and so on and so forth. And uh, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Bellevue Heights, because they have really done a great job of um, making sure that they have a family council that they're putting together and they allow me to come and have lectures each month um, where I can talk about something um, new or exciting or the latest research or whatever it is. And uh, then I also do a support group for them there and I appreciate that very much it's it's awesome for me to be able to reach the folks and I get pretty doggone good crowds as a matter of fact on Wednesday September 12th I want to tell you I'm rediscovering a beautiful mind I'm inviting the people that come to bring pictures of their loved one when they were well and we're going to put them on picture boards so if you want to come to that uh, we're going to talk about when they were young when they were teenagers when they were uh, adults when they um You know, when you got married and had kids, uh, vacations you took, things like that. It's really going to be a fun night, and I think you'll enjoy it. So if you want to come, call 303-690-0700 and let Bellevue Heights know you're going to attend. That way I can make sure I have enough boards for everybody to put their pictures on. Uh, You don't necessarily have to stick them to the boards, but some people do and made beautiful collages out of them. Okay, so I hope those care plan meetings um, and even, uh, like I said, sharing them with your doctor and things like that have been helpful. And hey, guess what? The walk to end Alzheimer's are happening all over the country right now. And next weekend on Labor Day weekend, I am going to have... Some folks from the Alzheimer's Association come in and talk about uh, the Colorado walks, especially Denver, the big ca- the big Kahuna there, <laughs> and uh, and also what um, what they're reaching for across the nation and around the world in these walks. 
I will have a booth there for my company, Summit Resilience Training, and I'm super excited that Hank, my uh, engineer, Hank Bradshaw, is going to be there with me, and we're going to interview people about why they are walking for a cure. And I'd love for you to come by my booth. We'll have the Cruising 1430 van there. It's going to be a fantastic day. It's from 7 to 10 in Denver at City Park, September 15th. So um, please take a minute, come by, tell me if you've been listening to the show, what you like about it. Of course, I don't want to hear what you don't like. (laughs) Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. But it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, if you need anything, of course, you can always call me. 303-420-6988. And I don't care where you are in this country. I have people who are listening to me on iTunes, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Google Play, and tune in. And you can also uh, access my show anytime you want to hear it. Don't worry if if you like this show and you want somebody else to hear it. Have them go on Cruising 1430 AM Denver and go to the weekend programming and you can just slide down and see Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. It is a a lot of fun doing this show for you folks. I'd like to ask again, I love, love, love when I can uh, put together a show with all the questions that you have and the different things that you need. Um, And if I can help in any way, please uh, email me at jill at summitresiliencetraining.com. And I would love to put your questions on the air, give you the best answers I can possibly give you, and see uh, if we can solve some issues for you out there. I had one in particular, and I just wanted wanted to address it today before we get off the air. I had a lady uh, who called and said that her husband doesn't recognize her. He's still at home. He has early and younger onset. He's 62. He's had it for about five years and he's pretty progressed at this point in time. And she said when she tries to leave, he says, you can't take that purse. That's my wife's. And they get into this tussle and she wanted to know how to work with that. Well, I have to tell you, doll, here's the thing. When that happens, uh, if you are in a hurry and you can't leave right away, I would just say, oh, this is your wife's purse? I'm so sorry. I must have picked up the wrong purse. Let me take this over and put it down. When you have your back to him, get your keys out and your wallet out. If there's anything else you need, you might be out of luck, right? Set the purse down. Try to slide him in your pocket if you can when his back is to you and see if there's any way you can get out the door. But use the tell me more theory. This is your wife's purse? Tell me about your wife. This, does she, has she always had purses that are this color? Just try to redirect that behavior to something else, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this show. We will see you next week. And I always love answering your questions and being of help. And get ready to see me at the Walk to End Alzheimer's on September 15th in Denver City Park. Take care, everybody. See you next week. been listening to Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Visit her website at summitresiliencetraining.com to learn more and join us next week as we learn more about dementia, Alzheimer's, and overcoming obstacles with a positive outcome. See you next time.